Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, look at the the FSU game, the Louisville game. Yeah. Um, you know, Brevin. Well, both. I mean, Brevin. Ma- even the NC State game when Brevin was out and Ma- Mallory had a huge game. Yeah. Um, I think that I, I'm just not confident in our wide receivers this year. I think Harley's going to have another solid season. Um, but other than that, <laughs> I'm. Just, I'm less con. So la- going into last year, Jordan and I were very confident that Harley would have a, a, a solid season and D Wiggins would have a solid season. And then we, as the off season went on, we were like, Oh, it, I think it's Mark Pope's year too. Yeah, we were, was, I don't know what the hell we were drinking. Dude, the, the D Wiggins thing was, was my absolute worst take of last season. Bro. I like, was so hot. I, we preached. <laughs> yeah. preached. I, I floated the idea of a 1000 yard season out there. Oh yeah. <laughs> Which is hilarious in retrospect. Cause he yeah. was so bad this year. I, dude, he, he, I, he had as many yards as Will Mallory. He had like 300 yards, yeah. 300. We were predicting at least 800. Yep. What? What? Like what? Yeah. That's a tough one. Wait, uh, do you I don't, think I'm not sure how many people, people. Sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. How many people thought otherwise, though? You know, based off of what you were seeing in the latter part of the year prior, like, you felt like Wiggins was coming on. You know what I mean? Agreed. So, I don't think it was an necessarily – it wasn't an irrational take by any means. Yeah. Not at that time. It's just I think we were all kind of surprised how that position kind of regressed. You know what I mean? Yeah. It is It is strange, you know. I, I think – I mean, it wasn't great – besides kj osborne the year prior that's true but i mean but that that's part of the problem you know is is we assume that there will be progression but there doesn't always have to be right you know like some and guys, I mean, that also shows you that just a position coach change isn't always the answer you yeah. know we all like rob likens we think he's going to do good things here but that was year one and there wasn't an immediate impact so you, to say the same you thing for T. Will and T. Rob like, doesn't necessarily how, mean how it's going to happen. Um, how, how much do you put that? Because Har- I mean Harley had a good year, but obviously the other two were very disappointing. Um, how much do you put the the lack of production and the disappointment of the wide receivers on Coach Likens, and how much do you put on the actual players? For me, the players always matters more. Like if if you're going to give them the credit for playing good then they they need to get some of the credit for playing bad also um so i think if i had to weigh it out it's it's not a perfect balance it's not a 50 50 thing it's got to be more on the player but at the same time your positions coach has to answer for something so you, you know he's partly to blame you know why wasn't that room motivated until you know harley had that rant that we weren't practicing hard enough or we weren't taking this thing seriously enough that's the point where you know the mental aspect of it really comes down to you know your positions coach yeah so i i think years um hold on let me just make this one point i think year two is really where we're gonna see um you know how much of progression coach likens has yeah honestly I got a I got a number of mailbag questions um, that that I want to ask. I'm gonna steal these from your Twitter, Marsh. Um, okay. So the first question is: Do you think the bye week before UNC will be another letdown, or does Manny finally start the trend of being prepared after bye weeks now that he has analyst help? So essentially, what's gonna happen at UNC this year? And and I'm excited to talk about this with you guys. Wait, 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 hold on. Sorry. You cut off a little bit. What was the question? Oh, so um, the question was, was do we think that the bye week is going to help? Um, you know, is that going to affect how we play against UNC? Um, but, you know, I, I would like to streamline the question and steer it a little towards, you know, what should we expect for this UNC game? How are you guys feeling about it this early in the process? You can go first, A.B. I mean, I don't feel great about it based off of our history against them the past two years. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, plain and simple. Yeah. I'm not saying I'm not saying it's a complete a 100% loss like the way a Clemson or an Alabama game would be, but you know, I'm not confident going into that game. Um based off of the history already. I think Mac Brown 
really knows the ins and outs of, of how Manny operates, and he's got his number at this point. And Sam Howell's one hell of a quarterback, regardless of which running backs he's got on his team. So all that's yep. all yeah. considered, it makes it difficult for me to say that I feel really good about going into UNC and, and winning that game, regardless if there's a bye week or not. So I mean, I agree. I, I mean, yeah, uh, I think as a Miami fan, you would have to be crazy to say that you f- you would feel good going into that game at like right now. Um, Sam Howell is probably going to be you know top three quarterback in college football next year. Um, they did lose both their running backs who are still running to this day at hard rock. Um, you know, they lost some of their receivers. They lost their talented linebacker, but still that's going to be, uh, we're going to be off for 16 days going into that game. It's going to be a Saturday in Chapel Hill. You don't, I mean, you don't know the whole, you know, if they're going to let fans in, if it's going to be 50,000 people in there, we don't play well on the road in those situations, but here, but I, I no hell no I don't feel good about that game. I if I'm the Hurricanes, that's the game that I have penciled in that I am I am up at night thinking about like I want revenge. I don't know how this team is going to perform. I hate that it's alpha by. I hate that it's off. I I don't know why we have our biggest games every single season off a bye, but that's just the way it is. Um and I think uh, Mac Brown just lives inside Manny Diaz's head, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think I that think, there's a psyche, uh, you know, aspect to it. That's an underrated component, in my opinion. You know, like Mac Brown played against a Manny Diaz defense every single day in practice for, I mean, I don't know how many years Manny was at Texas, but that's a lot. Of, that's a lot of uh, face time up close and personal with a Manny Diaz defense. Yep. So, like, Mac knows what the deal is, you know, and, and Phil Longo is an incredible offensive coordinator. Um, so, I don't know, man. It, it's not – I agree with you. People that feel good about this game are crazy, and, and they're being irrationally high on, on the Hurricanes because we've shown nothing in the last two years to make us excited about this. Sam Howell is incredible. Uh, Mac just has our number, and – you know, we we've yet to show that we have an answer for for what they're doing. Yeah. So I actually don't think the the bye week thing is a is a real thing. Um, I think it's a fun thing to make fun about. Well, not necessarily fun, but it's it's just something to to poke at. But um, I just want to stop going into these kind of games and looking just utterly unprepared mm-hmm. and yeah. unable to, to dictate anything. Like at any point, did we dictate a single thing against Clemson or UNC? I, I, I think a big advantage for Miami going into a game like that is going to be um, the addition of the analyst that we just hired, Bob Shoup. Yeah. Um, I think he's going to play a pivotal role in helping Manny prepare a little bit better, um, you know, just because he has more experience than anyone on that staff. So I think that's an underrated um, part that that some people aren't thinking about. Do you guys think I, he's in play for the DC position after this year? Yes. Yeah, I, well, I mean, he. How old is he? He's old, isn't he? Not that old, but. Yeah, I'm not sure how old he is. I think he's going to be in play. Um, you know, I I think. Uh, yeah, I I think so. We we have he's a 54. He's not that old. Yeah, okay. I mean, don't we have a? We didn't fill Blake Baker's. Um, we didn't fill his role, so we have an open spot. Correct. It's Manny Diaz. He's the defensive coordinator. <laughs> yeah, and, and the linebackers coach, you know. So, um, yeah, I I fully expect Shoop to be in play um, for defensive coordinator. I, I'm not saying he's a lock, but why not, right? He's had a lot of success in a lot of places. He's mm-hmm. getting a huge payday from University of Michigan this year. That's yep. why he's not on field for us. Yep. Yep. Um, it just makes sense that he would at least be a candidate. Yeah, I, I think he'll be a candidate. Also, maybe the the co defensive coordinator roles of of T Rob and T Will. I think that could be a a um a thought. Yeah. Honestly. Okay, what's another question? Um. Okay, so let's do breakout players for offense and defense. Ooh. You want to go first, Jordan? Yeah, sure. So I hmm. I am really hopeful for 
Jared Harrison Hunt on defense. I mean, I know he popped, like, maybe, maybe he, some people wouldn't consider it a, a breakout player, right? But I think there's potential for him to become a legitimate superstar, um, you know, or, or a star on this team. He has so much talent. We have Jeff Simpson, who was very successful here, um, who's familiar with JHH. And, uh, I mean, we really just need – we need a marquee player on that defensive line or the whole defense is kind of in trouble. Yep. Um, so that's, I, I worry that I make that pick out of desperation. You know, we were talking to Gabby just a little bit and he, he thinks that, uh, like the success of our defense will be predicated on the defensive line, which I, I mean, that's a problem where we lost our, like Phillips and Roche were head and shoulders better than everybody else on the defensive line last year. Mm-hmm. And it was one of our lesser defensive line performances in the last five years yep so there's the interior. yeah and, and there's there's some question marks there so i really think we need harrison hunt to uh to step up and then on the offensive side of the ball um i'm kind of i don't know where to go here um maybe will mallory how about that I like it. Uh, how about we see Will Mallory busting on the scene as a first round pick? Yeah, I like it. Yeah, man. Okay, wh- what do you think, AB? So we touched on this one before, but um, I think Don Chaney is going to get a ton of opportunity to take the first reps in that room. Um, you saw him come on late. I-, I think to the eye test, he just always seemed like the best running back in that room. Um. So I'm going to go with him on offense. Uh, on defense, uh, I know he flashed, but I think Gil Frierson is a guy that's really going to become a star next year. Yeah. The guy is an absolute savage. He is, I think, he's got a few screws lo- loose in his head because that dude makes a tackle and he's jumping around like a madman. I love it. I yeah. love it. So I, I'm going with Frierson on defense, Don Chaney on offense. Yeah, he. <laughs> I love Frierson. Um, He was my breakout player on defense last year, and – yeah, he he uh, he made me look smart. Um, so my offensive my offensive breakout player was also Don Chaney. But to um, to give another answer, I think I think Jalen Knighton's going to have a big year. I think um, Chaney and Knight are going to carry the load, um, kind of like what they did this past year at, at the second half of the season. I I think Knighton hopefully he recovers from his uh you know his injuries. But I, I just love that running back duo. On defense, I, I'm going to go with Jafar, uh, Jafari Harvey at defensive end. Uh, he flashed, he, you know, he flashed some, uh, some plays at the end of last year, especially in the bowl game against Oklahoma State. The dude is a freak. The is. dude is an absolute, like, he, he looks like the predator. I, <laughs> and I, I'm really excited to see what Jess Simpson does with not just the defensive line, but but especially Jafari Harvey, redshirt sophomore. I think he has a really bright future ahead of him. But I think, a, you know, a lot of pressure is going to be placed on him because he is supposed to be the next guy. I mean, we're not. Yeah, ex- I hope both of you guys are right with the defensive yeah. line picks because that would bode very well for our defense at this point. So I hope both of you are right. Might be the only thing to save our defense from catastrophe, honestly. Well, yeah. and, and I want to go touch back on the your defensive line comment, Jordan. I think what we're not – you know who's going to have to carry that unit and nobody's talking about is Nesta. Yeah. I mean, this is his senior year. He, obviously, he's, you know, he had a pretty good year last year. Um, he wasn't as consistent as we'd like him to be, but it was by far his best season. He was sixth on PFF by the way, for the team. Yeah. I mean, we, we see the flashes and I think he, he doesn't, it's hard to, um, the consistency just wasn't there last year. That's, and it's hard for, you know, regular football fans to really see the impact that, that a defensive tackle makes, um, you know, cause he's not going to get 12, 15 sacks like a a Jalen Phillips or a Quincy Roche, but you know, his role in the middle, but now it's his, like, it's his senior year. Like you, you, you say run it back and you, you guys have, you know, that, that 2018 class, uh, they came in with a lot of, a lot of swagger, a lot of confidence. And if there's one guy that has like who, to me, Nesta is one of 
the most important players 